Hi, and welcome to Comsky Corner. Today we're going to be talking about a few things that you can do to help you get a grade 9 in your computer science GCSE. The first thing you can do is ensure that you understand all the content you've been taught in lessons. So go through your class notes and ask questions on any bits that you don't fully understand and have another read through in your textbook or revision guide on that specific section. Um, another way you can do this is by watching YouTube videos. For example, here on Comsky Corner, there will be videos every week to supplement your revision and try and get you to understand it a little bit more. The next tip I have is to make your revision resources as you go. So whether this be in the form of flashcards or revision notes or mind maps, try and regularly condense your class notes and textbooks and all that information into a set of revision notes for you to revise from. Try and use bullet points, questions, and colors in your flashcards to make them more memorable. That way they'll be more useful to you because you'll remember the things on them a lot easier. Lastly, keep going over these notes and flashcards. So for example, if you have an end of topic test, um, definitely revise for it because then it means that when you get to your final exams, you won't have as much to learn. My third tip is to use the specification to structure your revision notes, but don't rely on them too heavily because at GCC the spec can be quite vague. One of the most important things that you can do is to use exam questions because exam papers are really useful as they show you the sort of questions you're going to get as well as what sort of wording the mark schemes want because a lot of time your answer will be correct but your wording will be slightly off and that will cause you to lose the mark which is slightly harsh but to avoid this you just need to do loads and loads of exam questions and if you see a um, specific wording that's underlined or in bold in the mark scheme, make sure you make a note of it in your flashcards or your revision notes so that you know that you need to include that in your answers. Also, you may notice that um, throughout past papers, the same sort of question will come up for the same topic. For example, for my GCC, um, in the topic of network topologies, you would have the same question on lens and whens asking you to identify which one it is and explain why. Um, so I made sure I did, like knew what the answer to that question was and actually in my exam, a question very similar to that did come up. So it's definitely worthwhile doing as many questions as you can. Tip number five is for closer to the exam. So in the nights or weeks before your exam, what you could do is take a blank piece of paper and write down everything you know about a certain topic. Then in a different color pen, you want to go back and write the bits of information that you've missed so you can just focus on those bits when you're revising. A similar thing that you could do is the night before your exam, just have one piece of A4 paper with all the little bits of details and information that you don't know from the whole course or whatever. And then, um, so in the morning of your exam or the few hours leading up to it, you can just read over that to get those last little bits in your head. The sixth tip is to use other resources like CGP books and Seneca. So for CGP books, they can be really useful, um, both the exam practice workbook and the um, revision guide, which I'll put on the screen here. And the revision guide is really good because you can go over um, bits of content that you didn't quite understand. And the exam practice workbook has loads of exam style questions, which are really, really helpful. Um, especially because it's a new spe newer specification, so you don't have that many past papers available to you. So doing these exam style questions are going to be really useful. Uh, Seneca, on the other hand, is a really good website at the beginning of your revision particularly, because it can help you get familiar with the content. Um, however, I wouldn't really use it towards the end of the revision, because um, the style of the website is more drag and drop and reading, whereas Towards the end of the revision, you really need to be focusing on doing just past papers after past papers after past papers. Tip number seven is to get someone to test you on the content. Um, this can be a parent or a friend or a sibling, it doesn't really matter, but um, this is a really good method as it can be a really easy way to see exactly what you do and don't know. And it can also be a bit more fun rather than just reading um, through your notes by yourself. My last tip is to do with the programming project, which takes the form of an NEA or a non-examined assessment. And this is completely separate from the two exams that you'll take at the end of the two years. This is also graded differently from your exams in that you just get a pass or fail grade and to get your GCSE, you just need to pass. Because of this, my main tip would be to not worry too much if your programming project doesn't completely work because you're not being graded on it, you just need to pass. So for mine, it didn't completely work. My scoring system was a bit off, 
but that doesn't really matter. You just need to tick all the boxes to pass. Also, remember that your write-up is just as important, if not more important than your actual code. So definitely make sure you're spending enough time doing this. My last tip for the programming project would be to keep it as simple as possible. There's no need to overcomplicate it because they'll just mean more time and unnecessary work on your part. So that's all the tips I've got for today. If you've enjoyed this video, then please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more computer science related videos. See you next time and good luck on your GCSE. Bye.